So let's look at this space right here. Okay, today again, we're covering diamond and triangle. Okay, uh, so let's start with this face here. This face, you see the strong cheekbones, you see the wide forehead, right? We see the narrow chin. We automatically know that we're going to be drawing something in the triangle family, okay? So if I close my eyes, if I never look at that picture and I cover it up, okay, I already know that I have to draw something, let's get our pencil out, that where the forehead is gonna be wide like this, okay? See how wide that forehead is, okay? I need something where my cheekbones are very strong, kind of pointed, right? And then I need something where the face kind of narrows out like this, almost like a, 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 a like a, a, a bullety shape or type situation here. Okay, so this is the this is what I need for her caricature. So when I start drawing, I take out my marker here. Let's watch what happens. Now I'm gonna. I know this is at a three quarter view, but I'm gonna. It doesn't matter. I still can get away with this. So watch this. Okay, watch. One. Okay, watch. And then what I'll do is I'll round off this part here. Okay. So you see how I was able to get that head shape in very easily. And then also the cool thing about this is once you understand how that head shape is formed, you can use your, your, your cheekbone lines to form the features. For instance, we can see how our eyebrows kind of tilt in. So all I'm doing is going to the top of the eyebrow and doing like this, you see? You see how it's almost, and I see my nose is within the cheekbones like this, okay? And my her lips are at the bottom of the cheekbones like this. You see? So it's very easy to place features once you understand how to build that face, all right? So this is, again, the classic triangle shape. Now, if I wanted to exaggerate, what I'm drawing here, let's say this is this is her in a normal format or whatever, right? This is not so animated. Let's say I wanted to do something like this. I could get away with it. Watch. I'm going to draw it with my pencil first for you. Wide forehead. Strong cheekbones. Tapered chin. Okay. Okay. We want to do an exaggeration of her. We want to smush her head down. Make it, so watch this. You see? So this might be her drawn in some a regular format. This might be her drawn in like as some like you know a different type of a cartoon. You, you'll see a lot of caricature artists. Uh, use the more exaggerated uh, type. Whichever one you decide to use is up to you. As long as you follow the rules of wide here. Okay. Strong. And narrow. Like the description of a triangle. Okay, wide, narrow, strong, okay? All right, so 
that is a demonstration of the triangle shape, okay? You look at this guy, right? You can see that his head is not as wide. It's not as big, right? So if I'm drawing his face, I know I want strong cheekbones, right? Because what does it say about the, the uh, what does it say about diamond shape? Your chin and forehead are narrow. Your cheekbones are rather strong, okay? So versus with the triangle shape, you're gonna have, you have a heavy jawline, weaker, weaker cheekbones, and a pointy chin, okay? Oh, so this one actually does have, you have, a, you have ex accentuated cheekbones, but they're weaker. They're not as strong. All right, so, but let's go here and we're on the uh, diamond face, okay? Your cheekbones are rather strong, okay? So we'll draw something like this for him. Okay, remember that the face kind of tapers down here, but this part up here is gonna be narrow. So all I'm doing is I, I would draw his head shape, right? You can see this is gonna be, this will kind of be the, the shape of the head here, right? See? So this will be the head shape for this character. Okay, again, this is more narrow. Uh, this is still, uh, this is also narrow. Okay. And then this will be here strong or the word rather strong okay so that's how you attack that head shape right there okay all right so um let me see here i think that uh we'll just find a few more examples of those two head shapes and then uh from there guys we'll do i'll just do a, a maybe a free flow caricature for you um, and then after that, we'll go ahead and do a quick devotional and get you guys out of here again. This was just a test stream to see, you know, uh, whether this would be better for you guys uh, at this time or at another time. Okay. All right. So let me see here. Let's go to. Um, let's go to. Uh, see all right so all of these here are diamond shaped faces so we can look for i disagree that that's a diamond shape right there i think that's more of a triangle shape because their forehead is super big but i guess once again they're, they're interchangeable i guess what she i guess they're saying that this is a wide forehead let me see let's look back at it around let me look back at it again a wide a small yet wide forehead okay i get it so let's go back to on that on that uh that uh that triangle shape okay uh so the forehead is not tall it's actually shorter and wider and this one is taller and narrower oh okay so she is in a diamond shape Okay, so let's look at her real quick. All right, I get what they're saying. That's the difference. Okay, so with this one, let me see. This was going to be this is going to be our triangle shape, right? This ain't gonna be a this ain't gonna be a triangle shape. This is gonna be a diamond shape because it says she's a diamond shaped face. Okay, so I have to do a narrower and taller shape at the top. So let's see how that. But we got the we got the strong cheekbones, right? We got the uh, we got the narrowing shape here. So, which means that it's narrower than the cheekbones itself, because this is going to be the widest point of the face. And then up here, you'll see that she has a, a tall 
it says here a narrow tall shape right oh yeah okay I get it okay so then you'll see her ear shape here And then obviously our hair shape is out here. Okay, I see it. And then we then we have like this shape here. Oh, okay. I get it. Okay. So, yeah, this this is going to be... So, I got to make sure that we get that as a note. That this is narrow, but also narrower. And I would say the word narrower and taller. And then this is obviously narrow and tapered. And then these are going to be stronger here. Okay, there we go. All right, so let me see here. Uh, let's pick another face here and see what we can find out. Let's see here. All of these again are working, we're working with our diamond shape, okay? So we can see the narrower and taller foreheads on these, on these ladies here, okay? Ah, so this one might be here, let me see. So seven cool ponytail upgrades for curly hair. And they're saying that she is also a diamond shape, a diamond shape face. Okay. So I just gotta remember, or we have to remember that when we look at the, 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 the triangle, we're looking for a much shorter, wider shape. So we had to kind of put it in terms that we can understand. We would think something like this, tall, like to see how short and wide that is and tapered and then the other one is tall and narrow with this and then tapered you get what I'm saying so this would be the difference between the two types of head shapes here okay and you're going to find too when we get into square shapes which is we'll cover probably square shapes uh, on tomorrow's stream uh, we'll get into squares, okay? That they are very similar in the way they're they're formed, okay? So let's see if we can do this one. And again, we're using the diamond. So the diamond shape is this one here. This is the triangle shape, okay? All right, here we go. So we got we're gonna use our um, cheekbones here. A tapered. Kind of a shape she has a little bit of a squareness to her chin right and then here we'll have a, a taller uh, shape that's narrow okay and then we can we can fill in some of it by adding this right here and then the warp the hair itself is what kind of makes it look a little bit wider so let's go ahead and add the ear shapes here got our earrings here All right and then we got this little curl around the side here okay and then we got your hair that goes out of here that's right on point right there yep she just has a lot of face so I'd have to make sure that I don't make her features too big so I'd have to 
I had to draw really small little features like this in her face to keep it looking like her. You know what I mean? Nothing could take up too much space here. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. I get it. Totally get it. Yeah. Okay. I still feel like I could have made her I could have made her face wide, but I guess I think it looks good like that. I think they that it's not her face is not super wide. It's just that her features are so compacted that they make her face look wide. So uh that may be something that you want to work out when you start drawing that, right? <laughs> hey, how you doing today, Nala? What's going on? Thank you for coming to the stream today. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. So yeah, this one right here might be uh this might be uh we're working today on our on our head shapes, all right. So this is gonna be again seven part series. So that I encourage you guys that that uh to come back and, and catch the next part. Uh today we're just covering diamonds and triangles. That's it. Uh tomorrow we'll cover um we'll probably go ahead and cover the square face and the oblong shape and uh do some caricatures with those, okay? So Again, here you can see I went with the format of a taller, wider shape. But again, you can see that with this triangle shape and diamond shape are very interchangeable uh, shapes. You know what I mean? I went on ahead and made her cheekbones a little bit stronger. Because see, from the front, you can't see how the cheeks curve. Like in, in real life, you're able to see, you know, the curvature. A lot of times what I'll do, too, is when I'm drawing uh, from a... from I'm drawing at home to practice live. I draw from moving, uh, moving uh, interviews. Like I might catch somebody doing an interview and try to draw them while I'm, so they're moving around. So it kind of gives me a little bit of practice from home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So that one look, came out pretty good right there. All right. Let me see here. Let's find some more. Uh, we want, what are we on? Diamond shapes. Okay. So we got another diamond shape here. So apparently all of these are diamond shaped faces, okay? Um, and then we did one of, uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, I can't remember what his name was, but we did a guy one here. So this is kind of what the guy will look like here. Narrow again. Okay. All right, let me see here. Hmm. So it says she has a diamond shaped face as well. What about this one here? Let's see. I, I guess I could be diamond shape. Let me make it smaller. Okay, again. Now, see here, I'm so tempted. I would be tempted to make hers more triangled. I think they, I think her forehead is short and wide. Like I think her cheekbones are, are strong. I think I think her face tapers here, but I feel like this is such a. I feel like this is a wide shape here. Like this is this would be like her little curls here. Right, and then I I would want to make this way out here somewhere. You know what I mean? I don't know. You see, so this is again interchangeable. Sometimes even when they say that that's what that shape is, it's up. It's really an interpretation thing. You can use I think either or to draw uh, these particular. You won't be like completely off if you do it this way. You can use these again interchangeably. Okay. Yeah. So, if you can do this part, you can. This is this is the this is the this is the easy part, right? And the cool thing about these, once we get into features, man, y'all gonna really learn something there too, man. When we get into features, you're gonna see a lot of different cool stuff, man. So I hope you guys are able to come back around and check out the stream, right? Yeah, you see, I think I was right on that. See that? Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay, let me see here. So now I can take my marker here. 
and I'm just I'm just freestyling with it again, showing you guys how to use these shapes by just intentionally picking models that make it look that look like them, that fit into this category. This is how I use my shadows, right? Okay. I might draw, I might throw a little bit of right there for you, right? Okay. So, yeah, everything, hey, thank you so much, Nala, I really appreciate you. So, uh, again, that's what we're covering. We just, I, I use a very simple technique. This is the first part of my series uh, to how to draw caricature. So, if you want to learn a little bit more about this, don't forget to, uh, chime in on the live stream. I am going to be doing live morning live streams. I got straight started today later than I intended. I started at 11 o'clock. Uh, so it's only like 1150. So we've been here about 50 minutes. Uh, tomorrow I plan my, uh, my plan time was to start at 1030. So also guys, if you don't mind, just uh, give me a, 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 if you don't mind, just letting me know how this time works out for you. Uh, let me see. Answer your question. Do a quick start a poll. Uh, uh, let me ask here. Hold on, Max. Let me see. Hold on one sec, guys. Let me see. Uh, was this. Hold on. Uh, too long. Uh, okay. Any time. Work. Four. Yes, 10.30 is when I'm going to start at. Okay, cool, Cheris. Thank you. Okay. All right. And let me see here. Okay, so we've already... Now, as far as the hair on this one, what I generally I recommend... I like to use um, real simple stuff, man. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break out my... Um, my my Crayola crayon here right and then I might you know with this here I might do like a whole layer like this with some curls in it right right and then I'll come back and I'll add another layer on top real quick black and white car caricatures don't take long at all they all right there you go so you got your little quick little caricature of her all right no problem we got to get some darkness under here too that's the only thing i think i missed out on right there yeah <laughs> okay Oh yeah, yeah. In fact, I just did one a few minutes ago. I was showing, I was showing people about my, <laughs> I was showing people what my head shape is. <laughs> yeah, I've done a caricature of myself before. Okay. Uh, let me see here. So, also, guys, if you have any requests or whatever like that, I do do requests here on the live stream. So, if you want me to draw somebody or particular that you follow or something like that i have all that information here at the bottom of my screen how you can make requests okay all right let me see here so we're working again on the diamond and triangle shapes so we're just talking about how to identify those shapes when to use them what the characteristics of those shapes are so that you don't have to stare at a person a lot when you're drawing their picture right Hey, look at that. Taraji Henson has also has that shape. You're going to find that this shape is very popular with females, okay? So let me put it like this. I always, as a rule of thumb, I group all of the ladies' faces into these two categories. I Unless they have a seriously different look that I can't get away with that. Like, for instance, 
um, you might see uh, uh, somebody that has an oblong or very strong jawlined face, but still I try to keep their face within the, the stratosphere of diamond and, 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 and a triangle because when you factor in makeup and all that stuff, generally, like for instance, you'll see ladies wear makeup and they do makeup in a way that accents cheekbones, right? So you can put your makeup on your face. In other words, underneath your cheekbone, you can make it darker, right? You'll see guys that have beards, they look darker under here. So it's a way of accenting or narrowing your face out, right? So um, you can do it like that, okay? And uh, so anyway, guys, If again, if you want the, to do any type of request, if if it's a celebrity, I only it's a ten dollar donation and it's fifteen. If you want somebody personally, for instance, you want me to draw your mom, that would be personal. Your uncle, your cousin, but somebody like a YouTuber or somebody that you follow like that, it's only ten dollars, guys. So I appreciate it. This is what I do full time. I teach art. If you want to take a class with me online, as well, you'll see that I have a, I have a place the information at the top of the screen here. I'm gonna put it up here periodically. And if you don't mind, check out our Patreon page. We have a Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Rouse World, which gets already here on your on your screen as well inside of the uh, inside of that pin at the very top of your screen. Look in that pin and it'll tell you about our Patreon and we have more exclusive content there. Uh, so you guys can check that out, okay? All right, so, uh, but yeah, I don't have any problem doing that request for you if uh, that's something that you'd like to do. Okay, let me see here. Uh, let me put this here. Make sure we keep track of our time. All right, so we're working again with the diamond triangle face, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys, this is, this is pretty much an exact science. Alicia Keys has the same kind of face. Look at all of these people that have that face. Kelly Rowland has that kind of face, right? So if we we got, um, you can see her face has that. Uh oh, wait. You see? So, but now if you really, really, really look at Alicia Keys' face, she has a very strong jawline, right? So. They put her in that category, but she really doesn't have strong cheekbones in her face. She has a, her jawline is strong. So her face would really be more oblong, kind of like where her, her, her jawline, let's say we, we, I still would accentuate the cheekbones just a little bit, right? But that means that down here, it's really more wider and a lot squarer in this part of her face, right? than the average, you know what I'm saying? Because now up here, we'll have a, a oblong shape, right? So if I could draw a line or if I could dot it, oblong means that it's going to be kind of like this, right? So this would be where her hair would start and then it would go like this and it would then change the structure of her of her hair. You, you see what I'm saying? Like that. See what I'm saying? So you, if you drew something that was too diamond, you wouldn't be able to get her cheekbones and stuff right. I mean, her 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 smile and stuff right. It's just the way her smile is and stuff. You got to do that. It doesn't it doesn't by any means uh, mean that she's not. That's not an attractive shape. It's just that you know you want to capture things that make people uh, look like themselves, right? You see, you see how she has this this very strong. You see, see what I'm saying? See how strong that, that smile is on her, right? And how she has this kind of a, she has a very, like a little bit of eyeball like this, like a little bit, like a super little bit. See what I'm saying? Like that. She got like a super little bit of, and then, you know, you can see this right here. She looks almost sleepy a little bit. So you see, she has that. She has a lot of strength right in here in her face. You know what I mean? Okay. All right. Yeah, guys, show the love. Show the love. 
tips would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Only if you're learning something. If you ain't learning or nothing, I guess. If you just want to. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So you see here, she's a little bit more oblong than she is. I feel like, personally, she doesn't fit into the diamond uh, or triangle shape, even though you could get away with it. You know, you could thin this down and all that. But again, if you do it subtly, it ain't nothing wrong with it. As long as this is what happens, this is how you make a, a you, what a, some caricatures or make the the women look manly is because when they do their face, when they do those cheekbones, sometimes they'll tend to bring them inside of the face shape and then try to build from that. Now that looks like a dude's jawline you get what i'm saying you don't very rarely see unless unless the, unless <laughs> unless this <laughs> unless this she is on steroids right <laughs> you know what I'm saying? she's a weightlifter you don't really want to draw this type of face right here you know what i mean <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying you don't want to do it like that okay so guys we got about uh I said we got about, uh, let's say maybe about five, five to ten minutes left. And then we're going to go ahead and close it out and let you guys get back to, uh, got, get back to work there. Or wherever you're at. I know you guys are probably at work right about now. Okay. So a lot of people said yes on this one. How many people answered this stream? A hundred percent. Let me see. So I got six votes. A lot of people said this time works for them six votes okay don't forget guys that go ahead and answer that that poll so i can get some information i'm looking for information today okay all right i need some help figuring out what i want to do here okay let me see what else we got who else we got that has that face shape so all of these are all of these you'll notice are female shapes so when i type them now let's let's look at if we put let's see here Okay, diamond. So these guys here. All kind of fit into that category. Okay. Let me see here. Let's look at. Uh, hmm. Yeah, this guy definitely. You can see his his strong cheek structure there. So now you could get away with doing this with him. You see what I'm saying? Because of the way he is. Now he has a short and he has a short wide forehead. So what's that make him triangle shape? So I can I can do something like this. I didn't even look I wasn't even looking at him at the moment, but we got a short wide shape, right? So I can just add some hair to this shape and I can make a an exaggeration of them anyway. All right, you see it? <laughs> see? <laughs> yeah. So we could use that one there. Okay. All right. So um, we're going to do like maybe two more and then we'll go ahead and get you guys out of here. Uh, let me see. Okay. All right, we got seven votes, so you guys did say yes. Okay. All right. So as we're closing out, I'm going to do one more, two more, then we'll go back over the rules of the face. After that, I'll share a quick little devotional with you that I, I like to share a devotional at the end of every stream. This will just be a short one. Generally, I do a more extended word of the day on um, Wednesdays and Saturdays, so I'm going to kind of keep it that way for right now. But... Uh, We'll we'll do it. We'll share a quick word of the day too with you guys before we leave here. 
All right, so we got another face here also. This is definitely a classic triangle shape. Uh, could fit into the diamond shape, but I feel like it's triangle. So I would do uh, cheekbones here, here, all right? Taper it off. All right, I would do the short wide uh, situation here. His artist hand, right? <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll be, we're gonna we're gonna tackle some hands in one of these streams here too. I really got I've I really been practicing my proficiency with that. I learned a killer technique off, off of Pinterest the other day. Boy, man, and it changed my it changed the way that I looked at hands, right? I was like, oh smokes, but you know, uh, yeah, I'll be can't wait to share that with you guys as well. Um, it's gonna be awesome. Okay. Oh, I didn't mean to do it that powerful, but oh well. <laughs> All right. So. I hope you guys learned something for today. We're going to go ahead and close out with the, we're going to, Go over the rules one more time, and then uh, we'll get out of here, okay? Again, guys, thank you so much for coming out. If you did tip, that's awesome. You can um, rest assured that we appreciate it so much. Again, this is what we do full time. You know, we draw, me and my wife, both artists, draw for a living, we teach. 
how to draw caricatures, right? <laughs> the easiest way, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, what can we do with this hair here? We could do something with this crayon too. We could do something with this Crayola. There we go. Some cool hair in there, right? <laughs> All right. So, guys, uh, the in closing out, we're going to go ahead and cover those rules. Okay, remember, we this is the part one of a seven-part series. Okay? This seven-part series is going to deal, first and foremost, with head shapes. Okay? Today, we covered triangle. We covered diamond what does that entail remember with the diamond shape you're going to see a what uh, you're going to see a wide uh, forehead shape you're going to see strong cheekbones and you're going to see a narrow jawline which means your jawline is going to be tapered in from the cheek shape that's all that means it could be shaped differently but narrow meaning that it goes inward from the cheekbone shape okay for if i didn't make that clear throughout the stream okay all right oh thank you so much tammy and then obviously with your 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 uh your diamond shape you're going to have a narrow forehead, right? That's also taller. Okay. You're going to also have strong cheekbones. You're also going to have a narrow jawline. Okay. So these are what make these two head shapes different. No matter whether you're drawing at three quarter or whatever, you need to understand these rules so that when you see somebody with that face shape, you know how to draw them. And then one other side note, you can tell these shapes specifically, usually by just looking at or noticing the cheekbones themselves. If you see strong cheekbones, uh, then you and a narrow jawline generally, even if you pick the wrong shape, you're not gonna miss that caricature uh, too much. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get my stuff ready for my word of the day. Also, if you guys, again, want to tip, man, that'll be awesome. You can do so at, uh, we have a, at, also have Cash App. So you can go to dollar sign browser world. If you guys want to leave a tip there on Cash App, you can do that as well. Okay. All right. So let me go to uh, intermission real quick. I'm going to come back. I'm going to share a quick devotional with you. And then we're going to go ahead and get you guys out of here. Again, God bless you guys. Thank you for coming out today. I certainly appreciate it. Okay? Give me just a second.
All right, guys. So uh, welcome back to the stream. We're going to go ahead and go into our uh, word of the day after the, the purpose of the stream is not just to um, show you how to draw stuff. But, you know, I believe that drawing and um, and 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 the word of God is 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 one and the same. It teaches me about God. I am a Christian artist. So I I, uh, I thank God for the ability to be able to do uh, to use this talent while I'm here on this earth. It has provided for me and my family for all of these years. And um, again, I just want to give thanks to God and I want to give back by, um, you know, sharing his word and showing the connections between those things. So um, that's what I do at the end of every practice session. So what I'm doing today is literally the stream is literally me sharing my practice time with you. So sometimes I may come on here and, and start drawing something that I don't have any idea how to draw. It might be my first time drawing. It might be something that I'm learning. Um, but I feel like, you know, you can learn better together. If you learn something, I feel like if you learn it, but you learn it while you're teaching it to somebody else, learn it as if you're teaching to someone else, then what happens is, is that you try to simplify it and use the easiest way you can to explain what's going on in your mind to that person. And thus you become more educated yourself. So that's just another testament of, of God's word that when you don't think about yourself and you think about others, then you yourself will also benefit from it. Um, so uh, real quick, I want to address Nyla. She asked if I'm going to do a stream tomorrow. Tomorrow I will do a stream again. It's going to my stream is going to be at 1030 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. Um, again, this is for you guys that have been following me for years now. Um, this is the first time that I've streamed this early. Uh, but it's because I want to find uh, where me and my wife had discussed uh, moving the stream to a different time so that some of our other uh, followers and fans and stuff could would be able to uh, also participate in the stream. So, again, that's why I had that poll up there. I would uh, like for you guys to go ahead and uh, also chime in on that to let me know what it is that you how you feel uh, about this time in the stream. I see here we have. 89% of people say yes, and then 11% say this is not a good time. And if it's not a really good time, then if you could also put uh, what time, you you know, just kind of like a, a general idea what time actually does work for you, uh, that would be awesome. Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead, guys, and we're going to share. Uh, I'm going to share a quick devotional with you. Um, I usually do an extended word of the day on um on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So today's word of the day will not be as long as it would in a normal stream, guys. But it is something that I hope and pray that it will leave you encouraged when you leave here uh, today. Uh, today, uh, I like to always start off with uh, an analogy. Um, I can remember one time I was driving my I, we, I take my daughter to school every morning. These are these these are my my little ones, and I actually just had a little one, so I got three of them now. But I don't have that him in this picture right here. But I always put that up here when I do the word of the day, because you know look who God has blessed me with. He blessed me with these awesome uh, children, and um so and that's my first son right there. I had my first son when I was forty eight years old, so that was <laughs> you know that was a big deal for me, you know. Um, but anyway, when I, as I was taking her to school. Um, one morning I got in the, uh, we went outside and I couldn't see, uh, this far in front of my face. Like it was, the, the fog was so dense and I was thinking, my daughter asked me, dad, how are we going to get to school? We can't even see because this fog is, is so thick. And I said, well, you know, that's a good question. And we just going to have to drive real slow because we don't want you to be late for school. You know what I mean? So we backed out and we was driving and uh, we had to go really, really, really slow. But the thing was, is that uh, as we got to the curve or whatever, I decided, you know what, we're going to stop and we're going to wait and, 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 and wait for this fog uh, to lift. Be well, this way we don't get in an accident uh, on the way to, to school. And eventually the fog uh, did lift. I was able to see the different obstructions and things in the road better. And then I was able to uh, go uh, forward and get her to school. So what does it have to do with today's uh, word of the day or today's devotional? Well, we're going to be talking about chasing away, uh, chasing away 
uh, the fog, okay? If you guys have your Bible handy, we're going to go uh, to the book of Psalms, and we're going to go to Psalm 118, and we're going to go to verse 24. I already have mine outlined here. So if you want to go there on your smartphone or whatever, you can go ahead. If not, you just want to read here along with me. That's cool, too. And uh, it says that this is the day the Lord has made. So let's, let, let us rejoice and be glad in it. You know, when me and my brother talk on the phone, he'll ask me, I'll see, he'll say, how's your day going? And I'll say, I say, I'm doing great. I'm blessed. This is an awesome day. And they'll ask, you know, well, why do you say that? I said, well, the prerequisite for an awesome day is that you got to wake up first. If you already woke up, then, hey, it's only sky, it's, you know, it's only, you can only go up from that point, you know. And um, when I gave my life to Christ, this is how uh, a lot of things change uh, for me. Verse, you know, every day before, before that, I would wake up in the morning and I kind of felt like, ah, oh, I got to do this. and Man, I got to do this. And I, I always, as a man, kind of felt behind. You know, I felt like, you know, there was... I was always worried about bills. I was worried about this. I was worried about that. And the problem is, for me, is when you start worrying about so many things, eventually what happens is, is you shut down because you feel like you got so much things on your plate that you just you just kind of shut down. And you shut down to the things that mean the most to you, your family, your wife, your kids, your, you know, the people that love you, you know, your coworkers, you to work around them. You might go to work and make their work day miserable because, well, you feel like, Man, it's, there's nothing special about today. All it is, every day I wake up, is a bunch of headaches and a bunch of problems. And this is the equivalent of the fog that we I was talking about as we, me and my daughter were going to school. What the enemy is good at doing is he's good at putting fog so that you can't see the obstructions. You know, you can't see the... The, how, the things that God has done for you in your life. He wants to cover those things up so that you feel like that you only see the bad things or you can only see what's very close to you. And what's close to you often is your problems, right? But you can't remember, you can't see far enough back in your past to see when God delivered you from this. You can't see far enough over here to see when God did this for you. You can't see far enough over here to see that you have a friend that you can call. You can't see here that your mother is still alive, your father is still alive. Uh, you, all these different things that are blessings to you, but you can't see it because it's like a fog in your face, you know. Um, so this is what this scripture means to me when I read it. It means that when I wake up, that this is the day that God made not just for not for everybody else, but for me. Because you have to say it for yourself. You have to wake the word personal. This is the day the Lord has made for me. Let me rejoice and be glad in this day that I have. So let's go ahead and share this devotional. It says, some mornings when you wake up and the world is blanketed, the world is blanketed with a thick fog. Okay? And it says, as you look out your window, you can trace the outline of the house across the street and perhaps the car in front of you, but the details of it are impossible to see. You can trace it a little bit out, but you can't really see anything specific. It says that is what, excuse me, that is what living with worry and fear is like now let's stop right there what does that have to do with what we drew today you know we drew some stuff today right when you are worried when you, for a, a lot of caricatures says how do i get over drawing live uh, i'm scared to draw in front of people i'm scared i'll mess up and all that kind of stuff when you are afraid of what the judgment of a person is going to be, right? If you're afraid of failure, if you feel like you're not worthy or not good enough, you feel 
for all intents and purposes. You just really don't feel confidence in yourself. You will become so focused on that that the basic shape of the head that you're trying to draw eludes you. You start you start thinking it can't be that easy. Uh, you start thinking you can that which one? What if I do it the wrong way? What if I draw it that way, this way, right? And you forget what it is that you're supposed to be doing. Today I showed you some rules to draw in each face shape, okay? In order to draw this face correctly in front of you, you got to remember those rules. And you got to be able to recall them at the time that you need them. You must write them on the tablet of your heart and in the tablet of your mind so that you can refer back to them when you need them to draw this particular situation because you're in that situation. So one, you got to recognize that you're in that situation. And then two, having this word or this description of what to do will show you what to do in that situation. Okay. And as this begins to work for you time and time and time and time and time again, you develop a confidence in this that you don't even question. That's what happened to me. That's how I began to believe in God. That's how I began to give my, that's when I gave my life to Christ. I said, you know what? Because it's unconscious for me. When I think, when I'm in a situation, I go back to the rules that the word has given me and then I implement the rules no matter what is going on around me no matter who's talking about how smart they are and what they know and how many books what they done read and what they done seen and what they've discovered and the philosophies of the world you know the bible says that the wisdom of man is a foolishness unto the lord so you can't somebody can't come to me and sit me out and say well you know let me show you this stack of ancient history from the hieroglyphics that say this, that, and the other thing. First of all, none of that even matters to me. What matters, and the Bible even says the most powerful thing you can share with somebody else is your testimony. When you've seen it work for yourself, then you know. When you use this, what I'm telling you today, to draw this particular head shape, and it continues to work and continues to work and continues to work, nobody's going to be able to sit you down and tell you to change up something that's working for you. That's absurd. So, this is what this is saying. This is what, when you are living with worry and fear, these things create a fog, okay, in your mind and heart that keeps you from seeing God clearly. So if I'm worried about everything, I can't see, I start to, this word of God begins to minimize and I start drawing something that the word didn't say to draw. The definition is right here. And I know the definition, but I'm so afraid of what people are going to think about my drawing, what people are going to think about my life, what people are going to think about this and think about that, right? How are you going to, these are just people just like you. What make them better than you? You're so worried about that, that you can't, you you freeze up. And you can't draw nothing. Then it says, but just as sunlight chases away the morning fog, my light or God's light chases away the fog of fear and worry. When you go back to that which you know, the other voice will be silenced. And I shared that with you earlier. Um, I had one of my students, she's in her 80s. She's a very, um, very, very nice lady. And um, she told me that. She said, and I and I, and I keep saying it because it, it applied, so it hit me so much in my heart. It says if a voice, if there's a voice inside of you telling you you can't draw, okay, by all means, draw something. And then that voice will be silenced, right? Chasing away the fog, Cherish, chasing away the fog. And that's in the Jesus is Calling devotional, the one we share on the other, on the live stream. 
Okay. Um, it's on page 294. Um, and then it says, all you have to do is tell God or express to him what your, about your worries and fears. And then you leave them to him. This is what spending time in not just in this world and doing the world, but spending time outside of this world, disconnecting from it and spending five or 10 minutes, at least in the morning for you, you know, you want to pray and wake up. You want to pray. You want to spend time with God. Because for me, when I spend time with God in the morning, before I start, it gives me perspective to deal with my children and to deal with my wife and to deal with the things that's going to happen right today. I got to be prepared. I got to be prayed up. And I'm going to tell you, it's almost like a, um, if I could paint a picture in your mind for you, how I see my relationship with God is, if I could illustrate it for you. In the beginning, it was me. and God okay he was with me he brought me into this world he brought me here he gave me the instructions he gave me a purpose he gave me all this and once I traveled outside of this circle and I became and I was born into this world I came here with instructions to do something I didn't know about this my whole life see I didn't know so I was operating on a, um, a very um, at the lowest potential that I could possibly operate on because I didn't know that's why I got hooked on drugs that's why I hung out with people and slept around with all these different people and um, you know tried all kinds of stuff and did stuff you know, uh, wandered up, you know, going to jail and all kind of craziness, you know. I just, I didn't know that I had a purpose. I didn't understand any of this that I'm telling you. I had anxiety, bad anxiety. I had to be on psych, psychiatric medicine, and all kinds of stuff. I don't have to take none of that now because the word of God not only is it potent? It's absolutely free. I ain't got to go nowhere. I ain't got to have nobody. I ain't got to take no medicine. I'm just, because I understand, and this is how my mind works. So when I traveled outside of this circle, okay, God blessed me with some things. I'm just going to use my children here. And he blessed me with a wife, right? But mind you, that these all belong to him. He made them up in here too. And then he put them out here. And then I was placed as a steward of these things. You see, when you have a friend, you call yourself, see, there's no such thing as an accidental meeting between people. Everything is in order. Just like I showed you with faces and drawing, everything's shapes. Shapes represent order and structure and discipline. You can't draw a circle the way you draw a triangle. You can't draw a triangle the way you would a circle. So God bless me with these things. So I'm taking care of, I'm renting my children and I'm renting this wife. I'm renting this car. I'm renting a house. None of this, you know how I know it's true? Because you can't take none of it in that coffin when you would put you in the ground. And the Bible says, and they said this in church Sunday, it was real deep for me. It said that there's two things God promised us. 
One is that every person owes one death. And the other one is that you will be judged for what you did in this lifetime. He going to ask me what I do with this wife and his children. Did I ever accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior? Did you believe in the word that I gave you? What did you do with the gift and talent? I, I showed you how to, I let you borrow my art. What you discovered about art, I had already wrote the book on, because remember, this used to be inside of here. I released this out into the world. Just like I released you into the world. And then I brought your path to this. What did you do with that? I gave you the ability to be able to uh, handle large amounts of finances, make be money. You you can make a lot of money. You got the gift of financing and you understand all this stuff, but what do you do with it? You make YouTube videos about it to try to make more money, but you never help nobody with it. Your idea of helping somebody is really, I just need you to invest more into me so I can make more money. You have a greed, you, you developed a greed for it. I want to keep it all to myself. Or art, for instance, that would be like Artist for the beholder. Art is not per se. It's a twofold thing, but it's not all just for you. Part of it is so that other people can enjoy what you've drawn. Let's finish up here. Again, it says, all you have to do is tell me about your worries and fears and then leave them with me. But don't snatch them back again. Once you said, God, I'm going to leave this to you, don't snatch them back. A lot of times I worry about, you know, as a man in my home, I worry about, you know, finances. I worry about, you know, am I raising my kids right? Did I do that right? Did I say that right? Did I handle that situation right? You know, because this is my responsibility. But I have to, once I say, God, I don't know, and this is what is going on with me, and in my prayer time, I went into the my prayer time, and I spoke with him, and I told him, look, this is what's going on in my life. Please direct me. Show me which way to go. I don't know. After I say that, I back away from the situation because I already know he's going to show me. I just got to be looking and listening how to deal with it. It says, trust God to help you handle everything that happens, knowing that it doesn't surprise God. The scripture says there is no such thing as a problem that's not common to us all. It says the devil's devices, we should, he's, all, he's, always, he's already familiar with the devil's devices. He uses the same thing to get us all. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. There ain't nothing new. He, let, he, he uses the same things to capture all of us. It says, and count on him to take care of you. Let God's light shine and chase away the fog. Implement his word and allow him to chase away or move the un the 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 the, uh, the un the 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 fogginess, the the unclearness, the allow his word to move that out of your life. It says, and then go out and live your day in the sunshine of his love. Remember, this is the day the Lord has made for you. So be glad that you have this day and rejoice that you have this day. Because you know what? Again, something that I heard in my in the sermon this weekend and, and again carried a lot of impact. They say they talk about the rapture and the, and the return of Jesus and the end of the world. The thing is, is that he said whether we see it in our lifetime or not, right? We don't know. But one thing is for sure, you're going to die one day. And you're going to be judged. The rapture could happen for you at any time in the next 30 seconds, tomorrow. So stop worrying about 
five weeks from now and three weeks from now and all this stuff and missing out on the day that you've been gifted today. Allow God's word to chase away the fog. So guys, that's the word of the day today. Thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate you guys. Um, again, also, I, I help, I'm glad you guys let me know about, I see some people here saying that a lot of this time does not work for them. Some people say it does. So I got some good information here today. Tomorrow, I will be doing a stream at 10.30 a.m., okay? This is going to be a temporary uh, thing that you'll see me streaming at random times as well. But uh, I'm definitely going to be doing the morning stream. Sometimes you might see me stream at night at some, you know, a really late in the evening time stream because I'm, again, trying to figure out how uh, we're going to proceed from this uh, part, okay? Again, guys, if you feel like you benefited from the stream today, and you want to uh, bless us, man. Thank you so much. This is what we do full time. Um, you can go to the uh, at the top of the screen there. The pin will tell you everything you need to know if you guys want to tip or whatever have you. Again, guys, thank you so much for um, listening in. I hope, again, that this helps you. God bless you guys. And remember to enjoy your day. Okay? Y'all have a great evening.